वेलकम टू एडुएट सो इन द लास्ट सेशन वी हैव डिस्कस्ड व्हाट इज द नीड ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन एंड हाउ दिस क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्स प्लेज एन इंपॉर्टेंट रोल इन ओवरऑल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ केमिस्ट्री सो आफ्टर हैविंग एन आइडिया अबाउट द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ क्लासिफिकेशन मेनी साइंटिस्ट ट्राई टू क्लासीफाई एलिमेंट्स अकॉर्डिंग टू देयर प्रॉपर्टीज एंड इट इज दिस कंट्रीब्यूशन फ्रॉम वेरियस साइंटिस्ट व्हिच लेड अस टू द मॉडर्न पीरियोडिक टेबल the periodic table that we use today has a name and that name is modern periodic table but before this modern periodic table some other attempts were done and some other tables were also given but those tables were later on rejected due to certain limitations but we should know those attempts because it is these attempts which led us to this modern periodic table so in this session we will be focusing on those early attempts at the classification of elements so among various scientists who tried to classify elements according to their properties the first attempt was done by johann olke dobereiner so let's start with how dobereiner tried to classify elements johann olke dobereiner was born in germany he studied pharmacy at munchberg and chemistry at strasburg munchberg and strasburg are two cities from germany and he eventually became the professor of pharmacy and chemistry in university of jena so this is his biography but we are not interested in his biography we are interested in how he classified elements so in 1817 dobena tried to group elements or arrange elements in certain groups having similar properties by similar properties i mean that those elements which are different that means they are different atoms but they have similarity in state that means if one is in solid state the other is also in solid state if one is in liquid state the other is also in liquid state okay and those elements have similar boiling points and melting points so these are the observation these are the observation that dobereiner was trying to find out okay then dobereiner find out that there are certain groups having three elements each and he named those groups having three elements as dobereiner stride so this is the specific term that he used dobereiner stride so in dobereiner stride he showed that the if the all elements of if all the elements are arranged in order of their increasing atomic mass then the atomic mass of the middle element is roughly equal to the average atomic mass of the other two elements so this is the condition of dobereiner that he put that if the elements are following this condition that means they are in dobereiner right okay so if we want to have a definition of dobereiner stride what is dobereiner stride then we can say that when three elements having similar properties are arranged in order of their increasing atomic mass then if the middle element of the in the mass of the middle element atomic mass is roughly equal to the average atomic mass of the other two elements then those three elements are obeying dobereiner stride are or said to be in dobereiner stride okay for example dobereiner's one of the dobereiner stride is lithium sodium and potassium lithium has the mass of 6.9 amu sodium has the mass of 23.0 amu and potassium has the mass of 39.0 amu amu means atomic mass unit this is the unit given to atomic mass so here the middle element is sodium and those three elements lithium sodium potassium are similar in properties and the mass of the middle element is 23.0 and the average of the other two elements which are lithium and potassium is 6.9 plus 39 divided by 2 since here we are finding the average of two elements so we are dividing it by 2 and the final result is 22.95 which is almost 23.0 so that means these three elements are obeying the condition put by dobereiner so they are in dobereiner stride similar to these three elements the other two groups that dobereiner was able to find out are calcium strontium barium chlorine bromine and iodine so these are the three different groups that dobereiner was able to find out so that's all about dobereiner stride but this dobereiner stride were later on rejected because they have certain limitations so what are those limitations the first limitation that dobereiner tried has is that 
Dobernier was able to find out only three elements or three groups having such relationship or such similarities. But there are 56 elements that were discovered at that time. That means in Dobernier tried, there are only nine elements, but 47 elements were left from his classification. So this is his biggest disadvantage. Apart from this, there are certain elements which have similar in properties but they could not be placed in those strides because they could not satisfy the condition put by Dobernier. That means they should have the atomic mass which is average atomic mass of the other two elements. So due to this we could not place similar atoms together. So this is also one of his limitation. So due to these limitations Dobernier trides were later on rejected or could not be found useful. But we should remember that Dobernier or Dobernier is the first scientist who was able to show that there is some relation between atomic mass and properties of a element. After Dobernier, the next good attempt on classification of elements according to their properties was done by John Newland. John Newland was from England and in 1866 he tried to arrange all the elements in according to their increasing atomic mass. So first of all, he arranged all the elements with according to their increasing atomic mass. So he placed the elements which has lighter atomic mass in the first position. Then one by one, he placed the elements which has higher atomic mass. So hydrogen was placed in the first position because it is the lightest element present. And then one by one, higher atomic mass elements were placed. And in the last position, thorium was placed. That last position is 56th position because there are only 56 elements that were known in that time. So after arranging all the elements in this pattern, he tried to study the properties of each of the elements. And he found a pattern. He found that every eighth element has similar properties to that of the first element. So this is the peculiar pattern he found. So he found the eighth element has similar properties to that of the first. So if we give a numbering to each of the atoms, one, two, three, four, and so on, then for number one element, which have the element has the number one, for him, the eighth element will be number eight. So number one and number eight will have similar properties. Again, for the number two, the element which has number two, his eighth element will be number nine. So number two and number nine will have similar properties. Similarly, number three and number 10 will have similar properties. So there is a gap of seven elements between them. So this gap is maintained in everywhere. So this is the pattern that was found by him and he arranged all those elements. So you must be thinking that in each of the groups, there must be only two elements which have similar properties, but no. For number one, for number one, his eighth element will be number eight. But for number eight, there will be some element which will be eight from that position. So which will be number 15. So number one, eight and 15 will have similar properties. So this is the pattern and in this way he arranged all those elements. And he compared this situation with the octaves that is found in music. So in music there is basically seven notes. There are seven notes and in western those seven notes are Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, Ti. These are the seven notes found in music and western these are. And in our Indian classical music these are Sa, Re, Ga, Ma, Pa, Dha, Ni. Basically, they are same, but they sound different in different part of the world. Okay, but all the music that we hear or all the music that is all the songs that are composed by a musician uses only the seven notes. So there must be some repetition. That is why there are different scales, lower scale, higher scale. And for every eighth note, the eighth note is similar to the first note. And that eighth note is the first note of that second scale. So this is the pattern that is similar to the pattern or the arrangement that was found by Newland in the elements. That is why he gave the name law of octaves. And we know this situation as Newland's law of octaves. So in this way, he arranged all the elements and he gave a table. And the table is this. So in this table, you can see that there are basically seven groups. And in each of the groups, the elements which has similar properties are placed together. There are seven groups because the gap between one and eight is seven. That is why there are seven groups 
and this is the table that was given by John Newland and that's all about Newland's law of octaves. Still there are some limitations associated with Newland's law of octaves. So what are those limitations? Let's discuss them one by one. So the first limitation was that Newland's law of octave or law, law of octaves are useful or applicable only up to calcium. After calcium the elements are not following this trend. That means calcium is the 20th element then its 8th element will be 27th element which is cobalt. Cobalt and calcium are not similar, their properties are different. So they are not following this law, so this is the first limitation. The second limitation is that Newland assumed that there are only 56 elements in this universe and there will be no new discoveries but later on several newer elements are discovered whose properties did not fit into this law of octaves. So this is another limitation of this table. Again, you can see in this table that there are certain positions where two elements are placed in the same slot. So to fit elements into his table, Newland gave same slot to different elements. For example, cobalt and nickel are placed in the same slot. Similarly, cerium and lanthanum are again placed in the same slot. So this is another limitation. Two elements cannot have the same position. They, are, they, they must be given another position or different position. So this is another limitation of this table. Again, there are certain groups where unlike elements are placed together. By unlike elements, I mean that their properties are not similar. For example, cobalt and nickel are not same with fluorine, chlorine and bromine. But fluorine, chlorine and bromine are placed together with cobalt and nickel in the first group. So they are different, but still they are placed in the same group. Again, copper is different from lithium, sodium and potassium but they are placed in the second group. Similarly, zinc is placed with calcium, magnesium and barium. But still, there are some differences between them. So this is another limitation. And certain position is also there where two elements which are similar, their properties are similar, but they are placed far away from one another. For example, cobalt and nickel are similar with iron. Iron has the same characteristics of with cobalt and nickel, but they are placed far away from one another so they are placed far away in this table so this is another limitation of this table so these are the main differences or main limitations of this table that is why this table was later on rejected but we can say that this law of octave is useful for only the lighter elements so it is applicable only up to calcium so that's all in this session in this session we have discussed about two important attempts that was done by Doberainer and Newlands after that, in the next session, we'll discuss about Mendeleev's periodic table.